Hello, I'm Pastor Mark of Overbrook Presbyterian Church, and I'd like to invite you again to join me for the next few moments to reflect together on God's Word. Today, we'll be looking at Philippians 4, verse 4, and actually just the very first part of verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. First, I'd like to point out that at the end of chapter 3, Paul was admonishing folks to stand firm, but he made it clear, stand firm in the Lord. Previous in verse 2 of chapter 4, Paul pleads with members of the church to be of one mind in the Lord. And here he is calling us to rejoice in the Lord always. Notice the consistency. Notice what's at the heart of each of these requests is that we are called to do all of these things centered in or on the Lord. This passage, rejoice in the Lord always. Scripture is always important to consider the context in which it is set. In other words, it's important not just to pull one word or one phrase or one sentence out and look at it completely in isolation. It's important to understand the context that it's in. Because here, Paul is going just from addressing conflict and division within the church to calling the church to rejoice. Now, you may think, what does a church that has serious enough conflict for Paul to have heard about it in Rome and to write to them about it, why would they be rejoicing? What do they have to rejoice about? But it's clear again, Paul isn't saying rejoice in your present circumstances. He's saying rejoice in the Lord. So Paul isn't saying rejoice just in your current circumstances, but rejoice in the Lord, which is a much greater thing than our current present circumstances. And it also requires a state of mind that focuses on current circumstances in a Christ-centered world view. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, we can look at anything that we find that we're facing through a secular worldview or through a Christ-centered view. I think a wonderful example of that can be found in Acts chapter 5, where Peter and the other apostles are preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they're arrested and thrown in prison. An angel of the Lord comes and releases them from prison. They go right to the temple. They start preaching the gospel again. Those who had them arrested realize they're not in prison and they're in the temple. They arrest them again, put them back into custody. And some of them want to kill them. But somebody there who is a little more level-headed speaks up and says, no, Let's just let them go if they claim to be of God. If they're not of God, experience has shown us that they'll just disappear and they really will have no power or effect. And if they are of God, then there's really nothing we can do to stop them anyway. So the folks who had them arrested, the Sanhedrin, agreed that they would let them go. But before they let them go, they had them flogged and whipped and told them to leave and not spread the gospel of Jesus Christ anymore. So here's Peter and the other apostles, and they could easily have left thinking, man, have we got it bad. This is horrible. We've been arrested twice, almost back to back. We've been ordered not to preach the gospel, which is all that we care about doing. And we've been imprisoned and whipped and we've had our lives threatened. But that's not what Scripture says they did. Let me read to you what Acts chapter 5 says was their response to all of these horrible circumstances. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing 
because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of Jesus Christ. You see, that was what they did. They rejoiced. They could have focused on all of the things that the world would have seen from a worldview as negative. But instead, they looked at what had happened with a Christ-centric worldview. And they knew because of that, they could rejoice because what they were doing was found important enough and worthy enough that they were called to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. And in that, they would rejoice. So again, just in these few short words, we see a very important teaching to rejoice always in all circumstances. And how we can do that is by doing it in the Lord, by having a Christ-centered world view of all that goes on in our lives and around our lives. Yes, rejoice in the Lord always. Thank you for spending this time with me today, reflecting on the Word of God for the people of God.